All right, sorry about that, folks. Uh, uh, the stream locked up. We're back in play. Uh, we're sorry for the technical difficulties. We're at nine laps to go. These guys are battling hard. We got a lot of lap cars up in front of here that are trying to battle for points and stay in contention. So they're trying to get out of the way of the leaders. Uh, so they're going to go around the outside here. As you see, they got you got lap cars at top, lap cars at the bottom, but the eight, he's able to clear. Oh, we got one going around. Michael Stroll and Cameron, they got into each other. One car spinning off track. We're staying green so far. Cameron Hearn lost all those spots. Michael Stroll is around. He is, did not recover from that. We stay green. Travis Miss Christian is the leader right now. He gets back out front. And there will be no caution. Caution's not out. Michael Stroll now limping into the pits. Michael Stroll is now limping in. We have a great battle. The 42 is on the outside. The 43 is right behind them. Give them a heck of a push. Trying to get back up to the front there. Uh, Blake Gordon peeks out for a second. Uh, will he go? Did he stay? Uh, he's oh, going to come going. out. He's going. Is he? Nope. He drops back nope. down. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I think he's trying and, to see if he can get some momentum. I, I think he's trying to get momentum and see what happens just behind him. As you see now, the 54 is there. He could jump out again, get a push by the 54, and there you go. There's That higher line starting to work a little bit, and he, he's going to have to make it work. But as we've said it once before in this broadcast, Blake is a great side drafter. He can make that outside line, line work very well by himself. Yeah, he knows how to do it. Uh, he can get it, get it done. He's out in the front. He's got quite a big, there's a whole bunch. The 42's giving the 54 a heck of a push to hit the back bumper of Blake Gordon. He takes up almost a half a car length there behind Travis on the outside. He is side drafting, going through the track three and four right now. This is what he's got to do. He's got to slow him down there in the middle of the corner like he just did. Get that inside line slow because that's where they gain most of their momentum. If Blake can do that with one to go, if he's on the outside, he would have won that lap because he was able to slow him down and beat him back to line there. And that's and that's what Blake will do. Blake is, again, that good. He understands that concept of having to get over there, side draft, and scrub the speed off that lower line, and he will do it. And he can do it. He's very stable with these cars. The 43 giving the 42 a big push. Fit back into the 54 and given the 13 20. of pushes they're getting right ahead to turn the 22 going Blake Gordon clears and he gets he now your leader 22 jumps up pushes the 42 out of the way the 54 now is getting pushed by the 22 the 42 is getting shuffled back numerous positions here we are about to be five laps to go as they cross the line here five laps to go your leader now Blake Gordon he's gonna get left hanging here as the 93 jumps out, but now the 54 leaves him hanging. He goes to that outside. Is there three wide coming into turn one? Coming out of turn two, the 54 is losing. He's starting to drop back a little bit. He's going to try to squeeze in. He's not going to have the opportunity with the 42 coming underneath them. As the fight now for the lead, Blake Gordon with the 93 of Travis McQuiston there up in front. Blake is saying, Gael, push, man. Get, get back to the bumper. Lock bumper. Let's do this. Because the 22 is all over the back bumper of the 93 right now. Making a heck of a run coming out of three and four. We got some lap cars right now trying to get up and do a third group to get out of the way of this huge pack coming across the start finish line. Four laps to go. We got four laps to go. As you see, they're going to work their way around some lappers heading into turn one. As these guys are side by side, the 22 starting to suck up a little bit again to the 93. He's going to try to give them a huge push as they come down the back stretch. He gets awfully close there to the 71 as they come out of turn two. Yeah, these guys are battling. We got four laps to go. The 55 jumps out where he's three wide now, three wide going into turn three and four. Will anybody else go with them? Three wide, 55 is now the 30 kind of peaks, the two peaking, nobody stepping out. They're gonna get back into line and it's gonna leave the 55 hanging. But you see these guys going side by side, side by side, and that is scrubbing speed as they are side drafting each other with Blake Gordon leading them down into turn one. Yeah, these guys are fighting hard. 
A 93 wants the 22 to lock bumpers. Do not let him go. The 43's got to stay on the 22's bumper. I mean, it's a team effort to make that outside line work. It can't just be the 22. Everybody's got to work, and that 55 is side drafting now. There it line. is. The Slow 93, up. he gets the massive push. He's going to get around Blake Gordon. And that's the sad thing about it. Once you get in that position that Blake Gordon is in, there's really nothing you can do unless the 93 jumps up the block or does something else. You're just riding to push him to the wind. Well, and the good news for Blake Gordon is the 43 is not on the back of the 22. As you see, he's giving a massive push to 93. He's cleared him right now. He could jump to that high line and take that high line with two to go. I, I think he might coming out of turn two here. That's where you get the biggest run. You'll leave that inside the line straggling, uh, but he doesn't. Uh, it's uh, he's locked bumper. He, he's on it. There he goes. The 71 jumped, so he had to jump. The 22 now getting a massive run to Blake Gordon. He's going to try to push you, but the 71, because he jumped back down, got a nice run, and as they are side by side, bumper to bumper coming through three, heading into four, coming out of four. Blake Gordon was able to get a heck of a push by the 22. Eric Weiland is a great pusher. This man knows how to lock bumpers and get it done. Uh, Final lap, Blake Gordon now leading once again as they come into turn one. What will Travis do? Will Travis try to use the same move that Blake Gordon just did with him? Because he's clear. The 71's almost cleared of the 22. Will the inside line jump out? They do. Is. There it is. The 71, but Blake tries to block him. He gets spun. 93 gets into it. The race is still on. We are on the final lap. Paul they are not everywhere. The 43, J.J. O'Dell, now your leader, followed by Chad Simpson. Nick Adams just behind him as they come out of turn four. Nick Adams jumps to the outside. J.J. O'Dell now jumps to the outside, tries to block Nick. Nick jumps to the outside of him. They are side by side, and J.J. O'Dell wins. Oh, Man, that was a heck of a finish there. Nick Adams gave it all he could to try and get it. He still came home third there. He was sitting about, I think, about 10th or 11th there with one to go and comes out third. J.J. O'Dell, uh, he moved up 38 spots. He didn't qualify, got randomly selected, and moved up 38 spots to win tonight. Unbelievable racing. <clears throat> Blake Gordon tried to block that run there so that way he could grab that win. He was just not able to get there quick enough and causes the wreck there as these guys uh, that allows J.J. O'Dell, Chad Simpson to get around, make the run, grab the one and two here tonight. All right. Well, he's making his way around. Let's go ahead and run through the field right now and get the results done uh, out of the way. You will see his burnout in the background here in a second. So let's uh, go ahead and get everything going. So in first place, we got J.J. O'Dell for the FIFO Racing. Number two is Chad Simpson. Three is Nick Adams. Four is Eric Wineland. Five is Brian Keita. Six is Hayden Pastoris. Seventh is Mike uh, Thwaites. Eighth is Norm Pedelaire. Ninth is Sean Carmody. He made a good run with that badly damaged car. Tenth is Brandon or Braxton Duwise. And in 11th, we got Calvin Florsky, who had a nice run there after starting near the back. Tyler Hensley in 12th, 13th, Riley Thompson in 14th, Eric Driggins, 15th, Chris Matthews in 16th, Gail Brooks in 17th, Blake Gordon in 18th, Thomas Brises or Bressy the third in 19th, Travis McQuiston, and in 20th, Cameron Hearn. 21st is Kyle Cooper, 22nd is Randy Bachel. Uh, 23rd is Danny Ware. 24th is Casey Shu. 25th is Kevin Bartlett. 26th is Zach Edwards. 27th is Tyler Dugler. 28th is Garrett Heath. 29th is Michael Stroll. And 30th is Brennan Bernhardt. We got Will Robertson, 31st. Steve Rada in 32nd and 33rd. Shane Theron. 34th, Alan Elwood. 35th, Justin Morton. In 36th, Don Runkel Jr. In 37th, is Delonte Ballard in 38th, Blake Zidi. Josh Laston finishes 39th. David Mott Jr. in 40th with Davey Hendricks in 41st. In 42nd, Brad Slaughter Jr. And rounding out your 43rd car, John Dover. 
Uh, sad to see Ballard finish so far back 37. I mean, he had a great night from the first half of the race until that accident. Oh, man. Uh, great looking car, great drive so far, but did not make it through to the end. So uh, let's go ahead and try and bring in JJ Odell. He says, I don't know how I just did that. <laughs> let's go. All right, man. Let's uh, go ahead. Uh, let's see if I can find him. There he goes. FIFO Racing. He's the only one. He's a solo guy. Let's see if I can bring him up into the booth here. JJ Odell, man, this is Adam and Larry in the booth. You got a copy. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, congratulations, man. Talk us through that last lap. Honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing in these things. Uh, <laughs> I just like I'm a dirt guy, and I I started there in the back. I think I started 39th. I just wanted to stay in the back and try to be away from everything. And I don't know. I just kind of got up there, and and then on that last lap, uh, I, I just, coming out of two, I saw they got swirly, and I just tried to keep the foot in it and keep it on, and luckily was away from it all. I guess. And uh, I, I honestly thought Chad was going to get me there at the end. Uh, I had a little bit of help there in the back, but I, I'm, I'm just as surpri surprised as everybody else. I mean, you uh, had a heck of a run there coming out of a four, but I mean. Chad Simpson and Nick Adams was wide over. You were throwing blocks left and right, uh, driving out your mirror, no doubt, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has the nerves calmed down, man, uh, from all the excitement on that last lap yet? Uh, no, not really. I, uh, somebody said to, something to me in the race chat, and like, I could barely talk, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean it, it's a heck of a way to come out and show uh like it like i said in the, the right before we pulled you up you did not qualify you started and was able to move up 38 spots to win the race man congratulations what do you got for him nick i mean not nick but uh larry hey man congratulations fantastic race man i know last week when we were doing the all-star race it was a uh, michael stroll that literally that had said that uh, i believe this is your is this your first or second season with them? Um, I, I've ran on and off for a few seasons, but I tend to only put in one or two races. Uh, yeah, I came, came in as a dirt driver on the dirt side and then just kind of stayed for everything else. Yeah, he had said that you uh, they were looking to see you make a jump, man, that you were showing some promise and stuff, and here you are, first race of the season, man, grabbing the win. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy, man. I mean, we're happy for oh, you too, man. Be you put on a heck of a show there, uh, get, navigating through that accident and then uh, pulling out ahead, man. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, you got Chris out there. He said, "Congrats, man, on YouTube." Thank you, Chris. Man, but uh, good luck for the rest of the season. The season, we hope to have you up in the booth more often. All righty, yeah, yeah. I hope I'm up here more too. All right. Have a good one, man. You guys too. All right, let's see if we get Chad Simpson. Let me see Chad down there. Got him. Hey, Chad, this is Adam and Larry in the booth. You get a copy? Oh, I got you. Oh, man. You had an up and down night all night long. Talk us through it, man. Yeah. P2 uh, is a good start. I'm hoping for Paul always, but P2 is good. And then you know, we had the crash early with damage and... After that, I know there were a lot of other cars that I saw damage around there, but I just could not work with people. My car couldn't suck up for the life of it. And I, I just ultimately was trying to hang on. When, when we got that restart after I got the damage, I noticed that the bottom lane was checking up a lot, so I just went top and passed a lot of people. I think I passed like 20 cars on that on the first few laps after that restart and got back up there and then after that it's just survival yeah i mean you had a little bit of damage there and uh but you were able to push uh were you afraid of the people around you trying to give you that push for that rear damage you had uh if it was going to affect you or not oh they were throwing me all over the place <laughs> i'm dirt tracking it down the straightaways trying to keep from wrecking it because 
I could not go anywhere. I told people under yellow, don't let me lead a line because I can't go. And they were still letting me lead the line and just pushing me all the all over the place. Um, and coming down to the checker there, I I don't know who it was that was behind me, but they were just all over the bumper, and I'm just I'm just back and forth trying to keep it straight. Yeah, it looks like it was Nick Adams. Nick Adams, a pretty aggressive plate racer, he loves it, and uh, he's one of our Ghost Fire Media team, but he's also a closed circuit racing uh, member out there for this league, and uh, he loves uh, plate racing, so he's very aggressive, especially when I mean, you're coming to the finish right there. He's trying to get everything he can come off turn four. You guys all went three wide, splitting it there. Is a very close finish there for you to get second. I I didn't know if JJ had damage or not. I kind of figured he, that he did. I kind of figured that everybody did. Um, I didn't expect me to be able to win with what I had. I know that I was able to make it kind of close. And I saw uh, Nick make that move to the outside. And I, I'm looking to my right. And I see him go flying by. And I'm just... I don't know. I cross the line. And I'm like, where did I finish? Yeah. Where did I finish? <laughs> SCP-2 pop up. I'm like, that's good. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always good to finish second on the first race of it. I mean, first is a first is great, but I mean, uh, it, it's a good way to kick off the season. What do you got from Larry? Hey, man, great finish here. Daytona, 43 cars. I got to know, man, did you even grabbing second, uh, you know, start you know p2 start did you feel like you know you were going to be able to uh get the you know at least finish second or even win the tonight's race well i'm not bad at plate racing and i knew i'd be starting i knew i'd be starting somewhere up towards the front whether it be you know somewhere at least top five and the goal is to just try and stay there and avoid carnage but that didn't work because the carnage was the leader so we just had to work our way through it from there. I got yeah, you, man. Great finish from you tonight, man. Hopefully you get to carry some of this momentum into next week. Yeah, we're going to be part-time here for a little bit. I don't really know what my schedule is for Monday night. So we'll be racing whenever we can. But thanks to uh, my guys over at VRS Satellite Racing, Virtual Racing School, and everybody else, thanks to you guys for coming on board, too. No problem. We appreciate you guys uh, having us on board, man. We love calling races, and uh, you guys put on a heck of a show for us tonight. Yeah, thanks. All right, man. Have a good night. All right. Let's see if we can get uh, let's see. Is Nick Adams out there? He's finished third. It is emptied, man. Nick Adams is already gone. All right. We got... Eric Wyland, he's out there in the waiting room. Let's go ahead and pull him up and uh, get the fourth place driver in here. Eric, it's Adam and Larry in the booth. You got our copy? Yes, sir. Adam, I got you. Oh, man. Uh, go ahead and talk to us about the race, man. You were up there all night. You got in a little bit of trouble. You're able to bounce back. Uh, I know once or twice you were able. You, you said, screw this, brother. I'm going to hop in the back. Uh, were you trying to play it safe at the beginning? Uh, realistically, Adam, the first goal to check off for the year was lead a lap, uh, get ourselves on the points board. So stayed up there to mix it up with Brad and uh, Delonta, a couple teammates there here at uh, Vir Virtual Racing Alliance. And, and we made it work. Uh, at one point, like you said, I did not feel comfortable. And it was like, OK, it's time to time to take a chill pill. Uh, so we did do that, but all in all, placed the car where we needed to pretty much 99 out of 100 times tonight. Uh, and honestly, walking out of a fourth or walking out of Daytona with a fourth place finish is kind of more than I could hope for, uh, though I definitely thought I could have won that race. Yeah, Larry, uh, what do you got for him? Yeah, man. Hey, you, you had a great run here tonight. How was the racing out there? I mean, from from up here, it seemed like for the most part it was pretty chilled and uh, you know not too many aggressive moves. But from you know driver's perspective, how how was it out there tonight? Uh, I hope you're talking about just the first like twenty or thirty laps there because yeah, that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> that, yeah, Larry. That's kind of how the the first part of the race went uh, up until we got that yellow right before midway. 
Uh, it's like after, right after that yellow, it was like a uh, switch was flipped and, and everybody was hell for leather there. So uh, honestly, my first time out with these guys, I, it, it was a learning experience a lot. I, I felt like I learned a lot about how a lot of these guys at least race in this specific uh, style. It's super speedways. Uh, I'm sure when we get to our our mile and a half and our road courses, it's going to drive a little differently for these guys. But all in all, just learning who had the respect out there, who had trust that they would build up with each guy uh, was a lot of a lot of the challenge tonight. And I honestly enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, it, it to me it works my mind a lot more while I'm racing, so I kind of get real analytical about it. And uh, all all in all, like I said, just a learning experience that you take a lot away from. Wish it could have gone different there in the last two laps, but uh, hey, to walk away with fourth is, is great, Larry. Absolutely, man! Congratulations. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, yeah, you, you did a great job out there. Uh, I, I know you fell back for a little bit, but the you know I think you did the right thing because uh, shortly after you did, probably about five, ten laps later, there was a huge wreck. You were not involved. You were able to get back up, and I think you're sitting right around second or third after that uh, caution that came out. And uh, you were stay up there for the rest of the night. I mean, you were a hell of a pusher. Uh, anybody you're in front of, you you work with them no matter what it looked like. Uh, you gave everybody a huge push. Yeah, Adam, that, 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 like I said, that was a lot of the fun of it was just kind of building trust with people, learning their tendencies and who had a who had a spectacular time holding the bottom and who struggled to hold the bottom a lot. Uh, it just presented that challenge. I apologize to my VRA guys back at the shop. We got a lot of dirt to pull out from under the car. Uh, that turn four, <laughs> that turn four hill got a workout uh, with me going up over top of it a couple times. But uh, nonetheless, all it was just a wonderful time out there. I had a blast, and uh, I can't wait till next week. No problem, man. Hey, man, uh, congratulations on uh, that fourth place finish, man. And we'll uh, hope to have you up in the booth more often. Hey, I appreciate it. Adam, Larry, thank you guys. I want to say a shout out to uh, the United Front community, the squad gaming community, community that I'm a part of. Uh, they decided to jump on, on the car this year, uh, and I honestly appreciate them a lot for that. Alan over Alan and the rest of the guys, Cam, Danny, uh, Shane, Delant, Brad, all over at VRA, Randy. Uh, that was a lot of fun tonight, and uh, I can't wait till, till we get many more with them. And uh, thanks to Elwood Designs for the paint. And I hope to talk to you guys next week at, uh, I believe we go to Homestead, right? I believe so. And then this man has prepared for this speech, man. I love that. I think you do a little <laughs> bit better than me to shout out to all those sponsors like that. Oh, you, you never can forget them, Adam. They, 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 all, they all do a good job. Plus, you know, you got a car to look at that really helps you out. A little <laughs> real life tip I learned a long time ago. Also, a huge shout out to you guys at Ghost Fire for everything you've done. The All Star event was a, a great broadcast, and uh, how uh, Carl Henderson was able to get all that code in there for, for the ticker and then continuing it the rest of the season. It's going to be fun to watch, and I'm excited to go watch this one back from you guys. I appreciate it, man. You have a great night. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Larry. You guys have a great night. How's it going, buddy? All right. So I reached out to Nick. Nick was able to come in. I love talking with Nick. He's one of our own. And uh, I want to hear his thoughts after this, uh, you know, wild inning here for him to jump up. So let's bring Nick up in. Hey, Nick, it's Adam and Larry in the booth to get our coffee. I do. Hey, man, uh, go ahead and talk to us, man. Uh, how was your night? Uh, it, it started out kind of like i expected i started in the back because i made a mistake in qualifying and um i just slowly worked my way through the field and just used all that patience that my ccr teammates have uh tried to instill in me uh and then josh tried to take out the whole field uh and then after that caution about i would say halfway through the race everything kind of calmed down a little bit for a little while but people out of uh switch was flipped from probably about like lap 45 to, to 60 and everybody calmed down to the last 10 but it was fun out there. Gotcha, man. Uh, so what were you thinking sitting with almost one to go? You were in back, what, 10th, 11th spot there, like where you're like, well, that was it. Uh, I'm done for. I'm, I'm just sitting here. And then uh, what was your thoughts going there on that final lap? Uh, coming to the white flag, it, you know, crazier things have happened at Super Speedway, so I didn't count myself out yet. I was just hoping to try to get into the top five. I was, I was you know, content with the top 10 that was my goal coming in um 
And then as we got down the back stretch and I saw everybody wrecking, I was like, well, this is a, if I can get through this, this, this changes everything. I'm going to try to win this race if I can. And, um, you know, almost got it out of turn four. If it was Talladega, I think it would have been a lot closer. Oh yeah, man. If it was Talladega, I think, I think you would have, uh, probably had it. You had the momentum there. Everybody was dying off and you were sitting in third. So I think you had a little bit more drafting. So you're going to carry a little bit more speed would have been close. Yeah, everybody over at CCR, you know, they've helped me out a lot, uh, just getting my confidence up and helped me become a better driver. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go out there tonight and, and prove them right that I, uh, I've gotten better. So, you know, we hope to uh, be competing for wins throughout the season. I appreciate it, man. What do you got for them, Larry? None, man. It was a good run tonight. <laughs> hey, thanks, more. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Nick, you have a great night, and uh, we'll see you uh, on the rest of this uh, 2021 B Series, man. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. <laughs> All right, Larry, man, that was a heck of a race, a hell of a finish there. I mean, the last five laps were exciting. Oh, I moved myself and Nick into the broadcast uh, waiting room. Sorry, uh, Larry. Uh, the last five laps were exciting, uh, especially the last lap, and I, I can't wait to see what the rest of this lo this 16-week uh, season has to offer, man. Yeah, absolutely. Great racing tonight, and can't wait to see 43 cars on some of these short tracks, as I stated earlier, but it's going to be a fun season. I got you, man. Well, uh, I'm Adam Wood. That's Larry Patrick. Patrick. We are part of the Ghostfire Media team. Follow us, subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, it means a lot to us. Hit that little bell on YouTube so whenever we go live, you know it. Come out and comment. Have your friends and family follow us. Uh, cheer you on. Gives us somebody to talk to. We want to see the fans out there. So please come out and uh, follow us. And look forward to seeing the rest of the league on next Monday night. Uh, with that, I, uh, we are out for the night. You guys have a great evening. Thank you for watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network.